YouTube fam. I am going to show you today how we are teaching our one-year-old a second language. My husband is from West Africa and this is his tribal language. Later in the day, we'll show you more why we're doing this, how we're doing it, and why it's important to us, but come along. Tulima. 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 Good morning. Good morning. Our one-year-old is in the bathroom now, and I'm here at the bathroom door, and so I will tell her potty in the other language, guna, guna. And then up here, you'll see that I have English words with um, the second language um, next to it, so that way I know some of the basics for the bathroom. Um, so that way I can tell her potty, brush your teeth, and wash your hands um, as I'm also learning the language alongside of her. Now my husband, he doesn't have to think as hard and he can just say it, um, but these post-it notes in each location that I'm going to be saying the word to her have been really helpful. Hello Ubuntu fam, we are going to share with you why we are speaking a second language to our daughter. Carson, you want to share a little bit about the languages that we speak in our home? No. Ah, ha, ha, ha. So we speak four languages in our home. Come, English, obviously, French, and Pigeon. So it's really important to us that Vera grows up knowing her tribal roots. And she can really connect with that aspect of her identity. I would say these things to her in Kam. And one day I said, Atu, which is head. And she showed her head. And uh, that was probably one of the best days of my life. Tips for starting um, to speak a second language or a third language in the home. And they're coming from non-experts. We're figuring this out and we're seeking advice from others and trying to learn along the way. So a couple things is have the parent that speaks the other language speak only in that language to them. So that way they are hearing both languages um, majority of the time. So Carlson speaks calm and I speak English to our daughter. Second tip I would say, the words that you say a lot, rep repetition throughout the day. So like, good morning, good night, would you like more? Are you all done eating? Do you need to go potty? Thank you. No, don't do that. Learn those um, and speak those repetitions. So those words that you can re repeat over and over, say those over and over in that other language and they will pick up on those things. So even me as a non-com speaker that's trying to learn, I have learn some of those words so that way I can speak to our daughter um, as I'm with her majority of the time throughout the day. Third thing, I'm with her majority of the time of the day and so it's helped me to have the words up where in the home. So I've shown a little bit already that in the bathroom we have the bathroom words of that language written out so I can remember. I used to keep them on my phone, that wasn't helpful because I'm not on my phone all the time. But if I'm in the bathroom, I can look to the door in the bathroom and see those words. If I'm in the kitchen, they're there. If I'm in the living room, the words associated with play are there. So I can look to it and speak it to her. Just add to the first point is honestly exclusively in that language in at home, but also in public. Um, I have the tendency to speak to her in English in public, just, you know, I want to make sure others feel it, um, <clears throat> included, right? However, and I learned this from you, just that consistency um, really helps. Um, Another helpful element is including other people. So we have multiple generations living in our home. And so we have Carlson's mom, my mother-in-law, my sister-in-law, and nephew in our home. And they all speak calm. And so utilizing family members that speak that language, whether it's through a FaceTime call or having them come over and only speak to them in that language is another helpful component. So that way they know, oh, it's not just my dad that speaks this, but it's this community that speaks it as well. Now we do have to remind our family members to speak to her in that language, but through time they're getting better at it. And that's a huge component as well. I threatened my brother the other day. To speak calm to her? Calm. Well, he didn't do well today. Well, I, uh, he's in trouble. <laughs> One other piece of information I can think is when they are young, 
they won't express a lot of what they're learning. So you have to trust that they are taking it in mm -hmm. and wait for those moments when they can express it. Our daughter, for a long time, we were just speaking to her and it felt like a one-way conversation. And slowly over time, we've seen her make sense of some of the things we're teaching her. So now if we say a tu, she can touch her head. A jui, she can touch her nose. And she can't say those words, but we're seeing small bits that she's understanding it. Mm -hmm. I would say the first word that she can speak in a different language is dog, boo. And, you know, that's really been neat to her, for her to say that um, and see the expressive part of it. But be patient and believe that it's working. Lastly, please join us for the rest of the day and we will show you a couple other ways that we are teaching a second language in our home. So please join us. Eating is another big one where we have repetitive phrases and words that we say to her. And so we incorporate the second language in this. So kuluma, kuluma, ju, ju. Mufansa, mufansa, okay. Hey Vera, wamisima, wamisima, okay, all done, wamisima. Mama, one little man, I tiny, tiny comb, no. One little man, I tiny, tiny comb. Oh, Guma. Uncle, I tiny, tiny comb, so I no more move out to the land, take me along. Mimi. Oh, Guma. Cool.